Psalm 127, today's sermon is simply titled, Dear Mom and Dad. Uh, Dear Mom and Dad. Not every psalm is as specific in its meaning and its audience, but Psalm 127 is. And I want to take some time this morning to talk to parents. And you say, okay, Josh, there, I, I understand there are three uh, groups of people here today. There are those who do not have children yet. There are those who have children currently living with you. And there are the third set who you have, you have had children. They are now grown adult and they've moved away. Or maybe they haven't yet. And you're like, hurry up, you know, trying to kick them out. But uh, whatever it is, I understand that we are all in different life stages. Okay? I also understand that I am in the middle of a life stage of parenting. So teaching and preaching on parenting is not my favorite thing in the world to do, all right? I promise. Um, so I will go ahead and tell you this, and I'm going to conclude with this today, that I am not a perfect parent. Shocker, I hear the gasps going across the room. I'm going to take it a step further. I didn't even get her permission. My wife is not perfect either as a parent. Shocker, I know. My daughter just passed out. She couldn't believe it. I hope you understand that if a pastor is going to truly preach the word, I want you to grasp this, he's not always going to be successful at practicing what he preaches. Can you guys grasp that and be okay with that? Like if I'm going to preach God's holy, perfect word this morning, how many of you understand it's a sinless, it's a holy, it's without blemish? If I'm preaching this book, there's going to be areas in my life that I need to always improve in. And so when, when people get up there and a pastor's bragging, I practice what I preach, I'm like, dude, shut up. No, you don't. You don't practice. If you practice what you preach, you'd be perfect because you're preaching a perfect word. And so I come to you today just throwing it out there on the table that as I preach through this, as I studied for this, as I prepared for this, God speaks to me and God begins to work and change me. And so I don't come today with some psychological parental advice that I have drummed up over the years that I now want to just throw on you guys. It's not the case. I want to give you what the Bible says. I want to give you what I believe the Bible can teach us. And then I believe we'll all be better for it. You say, I'm not in the stage yet, or I'm kind of at the tail end or after the stage. Well, can we do this? We're a family. And you know, not, not every entree at the table is specifically designed for you sometimes. And it's okay. We're a family. Take a bite your plate and be like, all right, cool. Next week is going to be something for me. Everybody understand that? That's the way it is sometimes as a family. And so that's the way it is today. We can all be an encouragement to one another. There's a lot of families in this room that do have children today that are currently at home, that have teenagers that are at home today. And I want us to all be encouraged through God's word. Psalm 127. Once again, it'll be on the screen. You can have an app on your phone if you'd like or your Bible. Verse 1 says, unless the Lord builds the house... They labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Let me also say this morning by way of introduction that I understand that there may be those in this room who co-parent. You're in a step-parent role. Uh, there There are those in this room who have gone through divorce and they have the children certain times and the other parent has the children other times. I understand there are people in this room who probably, and there may be, and I'm not aware, there may be people in this room who have tried to have kids and the Lord has not yet um, seen fit to give you children. And can I just say in all of those, understand that we're going to be giving some general truths today. And I'm going to hit back on that, but I want you to understand our heart in this is to be uh, general about uh, parenting. And I understand that Everybody has nuanced situations this morning, and so this is not in any way uh, to downplay those. This is to talk typically to parents this morning, and if your situation is unique, 
uh, that is completely fine. So let's pray together and let's jump right in God's word. Heavenly Father, be with us today. Guide me through your word today. I pray that I say nothing, not one word that you wouldn't have said this morning. God, I pray as we come before your, your word, we understand that it is sufficient for everything. God, every question in our life, your word has the answer. God, every situation that we face in our life, we can turn to your word and we can find answers or we can find a road map to find the answer. And God, today as we focus our attention on raising the next generation, God, I pray today that you would open our hearts, open our minds, that you would speak through your word. It's in your name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. None of us like being wrong. None of us like vulnerable areas of our lives where we know there are holes poked through them. And we know there are leaks. And how many, if you've ever had children, let me just say this, if you've ever been around other people's children, how many of you understand parenting is one of those situations where if, you got, if you're arrogant and prideful, parenting will typically bring you down and humble you just a little bit. How many of you, before you had children, be honest. I'm going to make you raise your hand on this one. Y'all can't be like, you know, we ain't dead church in here. We're awake, all right? We even clapped at the beginning. Woo! All right? And uh, come on. Um, how many of you, before you had children, don't lie. I've got my hand up already. Before you had children, you made the statement, when I have kids... We will never the blank. Raise your hand if you ever made that statement. And if you don't have your hand up, what did the Lord say about lying in church? He didn't say nothing. But uh, once again, don't lie in church. You can lie in the parking lot. Just don't lie in here, in the gym, right? No, we've all made that. We've all said that. Hey, when my when I here, here's the one for me right now because my kids are eight and ten. Hey, when I have a teenager, let me tell you something. My kids ain't gonna have a fill in the blank. My kids ain't going to, and I'm often reminded, just wait until you walk a mile in someone else's shoes before you're so quick to figure out how they're doing it wrong. We, my kids are, they're not going to be stuck to an iPad. It's like, if you'll shut up, you can watch this iPad all you want to, all right? <laughs> just being real. Parenting's one of those. Finances are another one. You don't have a lot of people going around and be like, I'm terrible at finances. I'm horrible. Everybody's like, we're kind of like, kind of little, we're private about it. We're a little arrogant about it. Like we all think we got it together. When we know deep down we don't. Parenting is similar. Let's look at what the Bible says. I want us to see point number one this morning. I want us to see that without God, we are nothing. Without God, we are nothing. Look at the first verse. We're going right back to Scripture this morning. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. By the way, this entire chapter is speaking to parents. It's setting up, talking to parents. This is all under the guise of parenting. And unless the Lord builds the house, you're going to labor in vain if you try to build it on your own. There's one thing, parents, that we must all grasp today as we raise children, as we help others in raising children, and that is this. It is all God, and it is none of me. Listen, it is all God, and it is none of me. Hey, I want to build my house. I want our family to be built around this, and I want our family to have principles here, and I want our family to do this and not do that, and I want our family to be this. Listen, it will be all God, and it will be none of you. It will be God working through you, but it will, make no mistake, it will be God working through you. It will be God working. And without God, we are nothing. Jesus said in John chapter 15 and verse 5, For without me, you can do nothing. That includes raising your kids. That includes parenting. Without me... You can do nothing. And let me say 
this morning, you can read all the blog posts that you want to read. You can listen to all the podcasts you want to listen to. You can read all the books that you want to listen to today, or read today, or listen to them if you have audio books. You can consume all the content about parenting that you want to today. But unless the Lord builds the house, you labor in vain to try to build it on your own. And by the way, I am all for consuming content about being a good parent. I love consuming podcasts. I listen to podcasts every single day. I love, in fact, my kids get in the car with me sometimes. They're like, really? Another podcast? All right, I, I listen to podcasts and I try to better myself. I just finished a book about parenting. In fact, I finished a book about parenting teenagers uh, about two or three weeks ago. Um, I'm reading, I want to learn, but lest I think that my knowledge and the philosophy that I have gained is going to do anything, may I understand that without, for without him, I can do nothing. Nothing. And what I'm afraid of is sometimes as parents, we get all the how-to's and we're working on this new strategy and we got this new thing we're going to do discipline-wise and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and we have neglected the first step and that is to lower ourselves and to get on our knees and to say, God, if you don't help me, if you don't help me raise this kid, then God, it's going to all be in vain. Hey, God, if you don't take control of me, if you don't direct and guide my parenting, God, this is going to all be in vain. What does that word vain mean? It's going to all be a waste. It's vanity. It holds no water at the end. And once again, while I'm all for you bettering yourself, and if you want any suggestions on books that I've read, please, I'll give you suggestions. But can I say this? If we think that a flawed book written by a flawed author that has flawed children, that was a flawed parent, is going to solve our problems, we're crazy. We're crazy. Unless the Lord builds the house. You see, mom and dad, three words that we need to understand. We need God we need God we need God to help us raise our families we need God to guide us as we make decisions for our families that will impact people for better or for worse oftentimes for the rest of their lives mom and dad we need God we need God and I fear that we've all tried to build our own houses or we're trying to build our own houses and it's void of God. It's void of our need for Him. We must understand that it's all Him and it's not us. Secondly, this morning I want us to see this. Number one, without God, we are nothing. But number two, I want us to see this. Without God, we are restless. Without God, we are restless. Look at verse 2. It is vain. It's waste. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. The writer says once again that it is vain or it's a waste. To get up early or to stay up late worrying about this thing or, or that thing and, 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 and so scared about this and so scared about that. No, he says that God will give you sleep. God will give you rest. And did you catch that this morning? Sometimes parents, we are nothing more than professional warriors. Not warriors. That's what we ought to be. We're professional worriers. Oh no, but what if? Oh no, but oh no, but my kids if I, but oh no. But, oh. And we we become professional at worrying. Let me say this as kindly as I know how to say it. You're wasting your time worrying about things that only God can change. You're waste I'm going to repeat it. You're wasting your time worrying about things that only God can change. Remember the first point? Without Him, we can do nothing. Without God, we're wasting our time. Without God, everything is vanity. Listen, if we waste our time worrying, it's a waste. It is vanity. It is vanity. 
It's been said that worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it never gets you anywhere. Worrying is just like a rocking chair. It might soothe your psychological self for a moment. It feels really good, but you're not going anywhere. You're not moving anywhere. Go to bed early. Amen. Sleep in a little. Praise the Lord. Figuratively speaking, obviously. Stop worrying. Because God gives his beloved sleep. Remember this entire chapter is focusing on our role as parents in raising our children. And Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 tells us, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest. And I understand today, parents, that we are all in different life stages. We're all in different levels of severity as we deal with our children. I completely understand that. Some of you are further down the parenting road than my wife and I are, and others of you are behind us on the parenting road. I completely get that. And some may have more extreme cases to deal with and more extreme issues to deal with than others, but can I just say this? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Listen, parents, if the Lord is your shepherd, if you understand that without him you can do nothing, listen, you've got to stop worrying. You've got to stop worrying. Worrying about something that you can't change anyway. If the Lord is your shepherd, he will give you rest. He will give you rest. And, and, and literally, can I say this? There are, I'm probably speaking to some parents tonight who literally are restless sometimes. Like literally cannot get sleep because of worrying about their children and about their kids. And can I say this very literally? Get some rest. Get some rest. God will give you rest. So without God, we've seen what happens. We are nothing, and we are restless. We're worrisome. I want us to see, thirdly this morning, straight from God's word, with God, we are fruitful. With God, we are fruitful. Look at verse 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. I want to reiterate this morning that I understand there may be some out here who have uh, God has not allowed you for whatever reason that may be to have children uh, naturally I understand that we uh, we have some situations uh, of adoption and fostering and different things like that in this room and let me just say this that is beautiful that is beautiful there's nothing more beautiful than that but today for the sake of this passage, just allow a general truth to be preached this morning, that it is a privilege and a joy to hold the title of mom or dad. And can I say that? That matters not the birthing process. That matters not if it was a, an adopted child, a birth child, a foster child that now has come into your family, or a birth child. Whatever that may be, it is an amazing title to hold. Mommy daddy mom dad we're going through the stages ma hey dad and then it's like i don't know what you call them after that pops whatever you call them some people think that's like super uh um kind of like disrespectful i called my dad that from like the time i was 16 on i wasn't meaning to be disrespectful but at the end of the day it's an amazing title and can I say this, that the children, no matter how they wound up in your house, the children that God has given to you, they have been given to you as a heritage. They have been given to you so that you may take what God has for them and give that to them so that they may live it out in their lives and that they may take that same truth and give it to their children and that they may live it out in their lives. It is a heritage to the Lord, a heritage to 
the Lord. That means that they are given to us to continue the gospel of grace from us to them to theirs to theirs to theirs and to theirs. Children this morning are not a bother. Children this morning are not a nuisance. A children this morning, let me back up. Other people's children are nuisances. Other people's children are bothers, let's be real. All right? But your children this morning are not a nuisance. They're not a bother. Hey, listen, they're not an interruption to the life that you have planned. They're a gift from God. God could have placed that child in any home that he chose. And he placed that child or those children in your home, in your care this morning. Cherish that blessing. Love that blessing. Raise that blessing in the fear of the Lord. Be a good steward this morning of that blessing. For that is all we truly are anyway. God has given you, mom, dad, one of his children. Think about it. God has given you one of his children. And he says, they're a heritage from the Lord. Raise them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. We're about to talk about shoot them out, send them out as arrows. Somebody like, yes, yeah, sweet, I'll shoot mine out today. Let's do it. No. Listen, they're God's children. And you are a steward of God's child. Do we understand that? You see, they're not your child to hold on to. They're not your child to worry and fret about. They're God's child for us to just raise, to serve, to love, to worship, to bless Him. At the end of the day, that's God's child you say well my child is struggling here or my child is struggling there it's god's child it's god's child we're just raising them we're just raising them spiritually we're just raising them socially we're just raising them physically may we be good stewards of god's children and just as samuel was given straight back to god by his faithful brave mother so we should simply steward and raise our children to say, God, they're yours. They always have been, and they always will be. They're a heritage from the Lord. Can I say this? God in his providence and God in his sovereignty has placed that child in your care. What an honor. But he's difficult. He's God's. But she's got this struggle or she's got this She's God's. What an honor. What an honor. Without God, we are nothing. Without God, we are restless. But with God, we are fruitful. And then I want us to see this and the crux of the message this morning. Look at verse 4. With God, we lead purposefully. With God, we lead purposefully. Look at verse 4, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. I'm not much of a hunter, I don't know if you knew that. As I tell people, I'm a rugged indoorsman. Um, I do watch shows about people that like live out on the land and like no electricity and like there's something about that i told I'm, I'm a i'm a weirdo i tell people if i could if i had all the money that i ever wanted and i could just choose where i wanted to, what i want to do where i want to live alex you know i'm weird man i taught you enough i'm a weird guy ask alex all right um but uh i would have one house like up in the corner of montana somewhere with no cell coverage with like animals that I would that would feed me every day they wouldn't feed me but I mean they would be my source of food plants and animals <laughs> that was an awkward way of saying it um, but uh, they would feed me I would have a salsa garden oh all right 
figure out, I had to figure out a way to get my own chips, but I'd figure it out, I promise. So that's one side of me. Like, I want to go off the grid. Like, you couldn't find me. I just want to live out there and just see how long I can make it. But then I had this other side of me. I want a flat in Manhattan, in the middle of downtown New York City, where I literally could just walk, and I've got everything within, like, a quarter of a mile of me. Any and everything that I ever need. I call and have my groceries delivered. I have my food delivered all the time. I just, I'm weird, okay? So I'm not a hunter. That was all, all that to say. I am not a hunter, but I watch TV shows about hunters um, a, a lot. I kind of have this desire one day, maybe. But I do know this. An arrow in the hand of someone with skill, and I'm not even going to try to do the, uh, anyway, uh, an arrow, because I'm going to make myself look dumb. But an arrow in the hand of someone who has skill will hit its target way more often than not, right? A skilled archer, a skilled hunter will end up, for the most part, hitting the desired target. And let me say this, parents, that we must, and this is purposeful, we must be purposeful about the targets that we aim our children at. For they are the arrows, and we are the archer, and we guide them, and we shoot them in certain directions, for lack of a better word. But we must identify our target. Let me say it this way. We must identify our purpose in parenting. We must identify a goal in parenting. We must understand what is the goal, what is the purpose, what is the target for God giving me my children, what is the target for me in raising them, spiritually speaking, biblically speaking. Success as a parent looks like fill in the blank. What I say is not going to be what you say. But let me say this, there needs to be a purpose behind our parenting there must be a purpose as the as the arrow is in the hand of a skilled archer that's going to shoot at that target right over there and is going to hit that target nine times out of ten well as a parent we must be a skilled archer and we must point our children in purposeful directions because these kids these arrows that god has given us will end up hitting fairly close to the intended target. And I'm going somewhere this morning. But they won't hit an intended target if that, if that target is not defined, identified, and targeted. Follow me. Stay with me. I'm convinced that Christian parents all over this country, they float through life. They have no desired goals for their kids. Here we go. This is where you're going to start getting mad. That's okay. I love you. I still love you. They live in passive, reactive mode. And then they just can't believe it when their kids grow up and they're just all over the place. And they have no direction. Possibly it's because we spend our years as parents pointing them in all different directions with no target in mind no goal in mind of what God wants for our children and this is the latest and we shoot them that way and then that's the latest and we shoot them over there and that's the latest and we shoot them over there and yeah we have the little spiritual shot over here but then we have the sports shot over here and then we have the academic shot over here then we have the and we're just shooting them and spraying them and then we wonder why they're not focused can I just say it this way and I'm just trying to be very simple today if you want your kids to learn to love God's Word, then you must point them in the direction of God's Word on a consistent basis. Uh, that's super elementary. If you want your kids to learn to love God's Word, then you must point them in the, in the direction of God's Word on a consistent basis. What does that look like? It looks like having them at church. That looks like reading the Bible with them when you're not at church. Shocker. That would mean you, as a parent, would need to be reading the Bible when you're not at church. 
That means that when there's a situation that comes up, we don't just give them what we think or what grandpa told us. We give them a Bible verse to say, this is why we're going to do this, or this is why we're not going to do this. If you want your kids to worship Jesus passionately, then point them in the direction of passionate worshipers of Jesus on a consistent basis. If you want your children one day to surrender to maybe to to missions, you would love to see if God would use your children one day just in in, in missions. You're, You're passionate about missions. Let me say this, introduce your children to great mission works from the past, biographies of great missionaries, present day. There's some amazing missions, things going on in our world. If you want your children to focus on loving and serving the poor and needy, then point them in the direction where they can love and serve the poor and the needy on a consistent basis. You see, at the end of the day, oftentimes, children end up doing what they've been pushed to do their whole life, whether passively or purposefully. Whether passively or purposefully. Why is it oftentimes, this is not, but oftentimes, many times a son will go into the same or similar field as his father. Oftentimes that's because they had a good relationship, father and son, and dad would bring him into his world, and dad would let him do this, and dad would take him to work, or dad would put him in the truck, and let's go build this together, let's go do that together, and ironically... The son winds up doing something similar to that. That's not always the case. But isn't it crazy? Isn't it interesting that the, the areas that we focus on with our children, they seem to become more passionate about? And can I say this this morning? Simply put, passive parenting will produce passionless people. Passive parenting will produce passionless people. If you're a hunter, you have an identifiable target. This is what God wants. This is what God is telling me he wants. And I'm going to point that arrow in that direction. Now, as a, as a hunter, I hope we understand we can't guarantee every time we point that arrow, it's going to wind up right there. There's a lot of factors. Sometimes the weather, the wind, sometimes something else gets in the way and knocks it away. There's a lot of factors, but we can point them. Hey, listen, we can point them. We can point them as arrows in the hand of a skilled archer. We can point them in the right direction purposefully. Passive parenting will produce passionless people. There's a lot of complaining that goes on today in our society about the millennial generation. And by the way, I am technically a millennial. I'm on like the last two years of being a millennial. They're actually kind of redefining my, um, my I guess you call my, my five-year um, generation to the zennials because we're kind of like Generation Z, but we're kind of like a millennial. But a lot of people have issues with millennials. How many of you heard people complain about millennials? Raise your hand. We've got problems with millennials. And now this next one is, is Generation, what is the Generation Z that's coming up? And they're complaining about Generation Z. Can I give you a newsflash real quick? Someone raised them. The people that are complaining about the millennial generation, you raised them. We can complain about Generation Z all we want to. We're raising Generation Z. Listen, passive parenting will produce passionless people. We can complain all we want to about the the generations coming up. It's time we looked in the mirror, man. Let's be real. Let's be real. We've been passive. We've been passive as parents. I'm looking at myself. Let let me give you one. My kids their entire life, I'm going to be straight up real with you for a minute here. That's okay. My kids their entire life have been in what I call the bubble. The Christian bubble. Everything they've done has revolved around their church and their Christian school. And for the first uh, eight years of their life, that was the same place. Like, they didn't know when they got up in the morning if they were going to church and school because it was all in the same building, they were in the same classrooms, and it just is what it is. 
And they would go, and I mean, the children's ministry, and by the way, you're in a church plant that meets in elementary school, and we don't offer this, let me tell you. If you're checking our church out and you're not sure, let me tell you what we don't offer. We do not offer plug and play your children into our ministries and then back away and do nothing and let the church raise your kids. We don't offer that. Wrong church. I can give you 15 in this area that can do that for you. That's not us. So, but that's what I did. Be, I'll be real. Eight years, I dropped my little Christians off, and I, I plugged them in, and I took my hands away, and I'm like, I start to read a Bible verse, and they know the Bible verse. You know how they know the Bible verse? Not because I taught them, because they learned it in school, or they learned it at church. I'm being real for a minute. You know what I, you know what I was for eight years? A passive parent. Because I allowed the church and the school to raise my kids. Well, so I'm just being real. And what God is teaching me and has taught me the last two years and what we're acting upon now is that it is my job to teach my kids. And I praise God for any help that we get. Listen, I praise God that right now there's some little kids three to five years old or three to six, whatever it is, that are in a class right now being taught the Bible on their level. Man, I praise God for that. But make no mistake, if your children are back in the classroom right now, it is not that lady's responsibility teaching them this morning to teach them God's word. Parents, it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. And God is leading me down a path of being purposeful as a parent. I no longer can just walk up and plug my kids in, walk away and say, I'll catch them when they're 18 and man, they're going to be good, good little followers of Jesus. I'll see you when you're ready to go off to school. No, at the end of the day, I need to parent on purpose. I need to parent with a biblical focus. I need to take the time to teach my kids. I need to take the time to explain to my kids when I make a mistake, and they need to hear me say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, will you forgive me? They need to see my wife and I have situations where they need to hear us say, Sarah, I'm sorry. I should not have handled that situation that way. I should have spoken to you like that. They need to hear that. Listen, they need to hear the phone call that comes in and they hear dad talking to somebody like he shouldn't say. And they need to hear dad turn around and go, you know what, girls, I'm so sorry. I should not have, I should not have said that. That's not, I need to teach them that. You know why, this, girls, this is why I should not speak that way. Because the Bible teaches us in this verse that we are to be slow to anger. That's why I don't need to act that way. I need to teach them the Bible. I need to parent on purpose. And parents, we need to have a purpose for our children. A God-given biblical focus in our parenting. Can we please commit today as a church uh, with, 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 with children and parents here today that we will at least, at least become purposeful and not passive. Let me say this, you're not going to get it right all the time. The Lord knows. But you can be purposeful. You can be purposeful. I had a situation come up about a month ago. It wasn't a parenting situation. I had another situation come up about a month ago where I had a decision to make as a person. And there was only one of two options. I could either make option A or I could make option B. Neither one of those options were great, but they were my only two options. And I chose option A. And there were some a couple of people that really thought I should have chosen option B. Okay, I apologize. I, I didn't do this, but I will say I made this decision on purpose. And here's why I made this decision. You can disagree with it, that's fine. But I made it because of this. It was on purpose. Can we parent that way? Hey, listen, I can look at my parents and Sarah can look at her parents and say, listen, I understand that you guys might have done it a little bit differently, but at least we, this is the purpose we had. This is the reason. Hey, listen, uh, Melissa and, and Rachel, they may look at some decision that I make as a parent and they may say, Josh, I'm not really sure about that. But can we at least as parents be able to say, I understand completely because we had some options to do here and we chose this one. Here's the reason why we chose those options. We were purposeful in this. I just fear so often, we just like, <laughs> we just like float. We float. And like stuff happens and we just do stuff as a parent. Like, oh, okay, whatever. Oh, okay. No, we must be biblical. We must be purposeful. 
In conclusion this morning, I understand that preaching on parenting opens myself up to criticism, and I welcome it. Any leader who doesn't welcome criticism is no leader. Okay? So I understand that preaching about parenting opens myself up to criticism. Listen, I was raised in a pastor's home. I understand that we live in glass houses. I understand that. I completely understand that as we raise our children, there are people that watch us, and, 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 and whether this is healthy or not, they view a pastor that a pastor ought to be you know, more perfect than other people and things like that, and every mistake is, is magnified, and I understand all that. And I'm per- perfectly okay in my calling, and I'm cool with it. But may I just tell you that I presented what I believe God had me present today from his word because God wanted me to present it that way. There are numerous times in any given week where I will sin and mess up and need to go confess and repent. Many times during a week. There are decisions that I make as a parent that I could have made a better decision. Every week. Every week. But but by God's grace, I want to be more purposeful as a parent. I want to understand that as a parent, I need God. More than I need any self-help book, more than I need the latest whatever, I need God as a parent. I need to understand that when I recognize my need for Him, that He will give me rest in His sovereignty, in His providence, in His love, and in His grace. I want to surrender this morning myself and my parenting to God. For those two girls that God gave me, they're His. They're His. He can have them for whatever He wants. He can use them in any capacity that He wants. They're His. It's the privilege and honor of my life just to be able to help guide his, his kids, his girls. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to point them. That's all I want to, I just want to gather them and just point them where God would have me point them. As a church family, can we band together? You see in this room, we've got, Students from seniors in high school all the way down to second graders in this room. Can we band together as a church that we're going to help? We're going to help uh, John and Christy. We're going we're gonna to help uh, uh, David and Pamela. We're, we're going we're gonna to help Megan. We're going we're gonna to help Tim and Carla. We're going to help Jeff and Mandy. We're going to help Sam and Rainey next Sunday. Come on. Excited. We're going to help Melissa. We're going to help Jamie and Stephanie. We're going to help Steve and Johnny. We're going to help Jim and Don. We're going to help. Listen, as a church, we're going to focus. We're going to even help Carlos and Amanda. Missed you guys. Sorry, I was, was glazed right over you. We're going to help all of these that have kids in here. We're help all those that have kids in there, about out, out there that aren't in here yet. We're going to help. We're just going to help. All we're going to do, we just want to bound together, and we're just going to help point them. In, that, in the direction that God would have them to go. Listen, that means we pray for families in our church. That means that we keep them before the Lord in our prayers. That means that we focus, as adults, we focus our attention on the fact that our kids are watching us and other kids are watching us, other people's kids are watching us too. I shouldn't have named names. I'm seeing like four other sets of parents in here. I'm really sorry. But can we bind together as a church? Purposeful parenting why because because passive parenting will produce passionless people and man i don't know about you i just want my girls to have a passion to serve jesus i don't care if it looks like what i want it to look like or not serve jesus serve jesus that's our goal serve him whatever it looks like dear mom and dad if i could say one thing take psalm 127 to heart Take Psalm 127 to heart. Point them to Jesus.
They're your arrows. Not really. They're his arrows given to you to point. To point. 